if there were sort of one way to generalize and summarize all of the practices of yoga, uh, it, I think one way to look at it is uh, mastering how to use or restrain our energy for maximum results. <laughs> what I mean by that is that even if we think about each one of the eight limbs of the eightfold yogic path as presented by Master Padanjali, we can think about the yamas as being practices where we are in some way restraining our actions in the world in order to discover something about how actions lead to results. In, in other words, in order to, to somehow understand something about the nature of cause and effect or the nature of karma, if you will, that by restraining certain actions that may be habitual or may be culturally uh, uh, in, imposed or, or such like that, that we can understand something about how our actions interplay with their, their results. And niyamas, again, by sort of directing our energy towards ourself in certain ways, directing our energy towards study or towards devotion, we can then also understand something about that energy of turning inwards. Um, asana, Right, we're learning how to direct energy in our bodies in particular ways in order to understand something about movement and something about action and something about energy. Right? Uh, then there's, you know, the next two are fairly obvious, um, in my opinion pranayama. Pranayama is about the restriction and uh, release of breath, which is related to our life force, our prana. And so again, understanding how either restricting or directing breath leads to some sort of change within us. Pratyahara, how does withdrawing the senses, how does restricting the senses lead to that energy being available to direct it in a different way? Uh, and then dhyana, dharana, and samadhi, uh, of course, sort of narrowing the channel of focal energy towards, uh, towards one direction, towards one pointed focus in order to then lead to samadhi, which is um, all, uh, you know, uh, full consciousness, full expansive awareness, right? But we need that narrowing of the mental energy first before we expand. So in that way, um, so again, in that way, one way to think about the entire yoga practice is the practice of sort of observing the effect of either pulling back our energy in order to observe something or exerting some energy in order to observe something, right? In meditation, we uh, we become very still and we try to, you know, direct the mind towards a particular focal point in order to understand something about the nature of the, the changing nature of the mind. And then in asana class, we may be moving and going through a, a large sequence of changes, you know, one shape to another to another in order to observe something about the nature of action in the world. So... No big deal. <laughs> With all that being said, let's practice some awesome. Starting in downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Begin Ujjayi breathing, so deeply inhaling and exhaling through the nose, making a sound on the breath, like an ocean wave kind of sound. And we're striving to make the inhale sound and feel like the exhales. So already in the practice of ujjayi breathing, we're practicing uh, utilizing this, you know, either upping the energy where we need to or, or, or restraining the energy where we need to in order to make 
the breath the same. On a practical level, what I mean by that is try to observe which part of the breath is a little bit harder. For most of us, it's usually the inhale. And try to apply a little bit more effort to the inhale breath so that it starts to become as deep and long and as much volume of air as an amount of air as the exhale. And same with the volume of sound, right? Observe for yourself which side of the breath is a little bit quieter, which side of the breath is a little louder. And then you have a couple of choices. You can either make the louder part of the breath a little quieter by applying a little less energy, or you can make the quieter part of the breath a little bit louder, so applying a little more energy so that you're trying for an even breath in both directions. With your next inhale, come on forward to a plank position, shoulders forward over the wrists. Exhale, lower the knees, chest, and chin to the floor. Inhale, slide forward into cobra. Exhale, tuck the toes, sit back towards the heels, then extend the legs downward facing dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Soften the knees and start to walk the feet forward towards the hands, folding forward over the legs. If, even if you can press the hands into the floor, go ahead and grab two blocks for a moment and uh, Push your hands down into the blocks in such a way that you have even weight between all four points that are on the floor, meaning let the hands take some of the weight for a moment. And then look at your upper thighs without any conscious uh, you know, action going. It might be that the thighs are just relaxed and hanging out there. So you, on purpose, apply a little bit of action to them, a little bit of effort to them, so that the muscles that are under the flesh of the thighs start to firm up. One way to think about it is as if you were trying to kind of like stick the kneecap up onto the leg there. And then separate the feet about <laughs> that with distance apart or so. Bend the knees, come into a deep squatting position with the hands together at the center of the chest. Lift up tall in the upper body. Keep breathing deeply in both directions. Bring the hands down to the floor. Now raise the hips up and fold forward. Bring the feet and the legs all the way together. Hands onto your waist. Inhale, lift all the way upright to a standing position. Legs together, arms alongside the body, preparing now for Surya Namaskar, sun salutations. So without moving yet, just start to deepen your ujjayi breath. Make that soft, whispery sound. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three. Keep the ujjayi breathing. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, fold forward, hands to floor or blocks. Inhale, head and chest lift to prepare. Exhale, hop or step back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe and stay. Breathe out. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four, inhale. Exhale, bend knees. Inhale, hop or step forward, lengthen spine. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, stand up, reach up, exhale, arms alongside the body. Now what you'll notice, especially in sun salutation, is that some movements need a little bit more effort. <laughs> some movements take a little bit less effort, but you, the idea is to keep each movement flowing into the next so that you're kind of learning how to apply a little more effort where necessary and a little less effort where necessary in order to make it all flow together seamlessly. So we'll do the same sequence again. This time I'm gonna just count the breath and you keep your movement and your breath going together, meaning start the movement and the breath at the same time, complete the movement and the breath at the same time. Everybody exhale, full breath out, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, Three, four, stay in. Two, three, four, and X. Two, three, four, inhale. Two, three, four, exhale. Two, three, two, inhale. Inhale, hook your thumbs, reach your arms up and arch back. Exhale, bend knees, swing arms behind, lace the hands together. Inhale, hands to the floor, step the right foot back to lunge. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, planked. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, seat to heels, downward dog. Inhale, right foot forward. Exhale, left foot next to right foot, fold forward. Inhale, bend knees, hook thumbs, reach up and arch back. Exhale, bend knees, arms behind, lace the hands. Inhale, hands to the blocks or floor, left foot back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. 
Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, knees, chest tension. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, tuck the toes. Sit back towards the heels, then extend the legs. Inhale, left foot forward. Exhale, right foot forward. Inhale, bend knees, hook thumbs, reach up and arch back. Exhale, stand up and release the arms. Inhale, bend the knees deeply, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, hands to the floor, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, right foot forward, warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, left foot forward, warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, or the mukha. Exhale, Adho Mukha. One more time, each side. Inhale, right foot, warrior one. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Last times for now. Inhale, left foot forward. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Shonasana. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Hold and breathe. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, bend knees. Inhale, hopper, step forward, feet to hands. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend knees, reach up. Exhale, stand. Separate the feet just a few inches apart only. Parallel, hands on your waist. Inhale, lift up your chest, squeeze the elbows towards each other. Exhale, start to fold forward. Go ahead and bend the knees. Reach down, grab hold of the big toes with yogic toe lock. Keeping the knees bent. In fact, bend the knees a little bit more and look forward. And then imagine you want to lengthen the abdomen against the thighs. So I'm even going to Pull my lower ribs more down towards my knees a little bit. And then for the first few breaths, keep your belly and your thighs together, your belly and your thighs together. Start to extend the legs, but stop just before the abdomen and the legs want to separate. So you're going to keep the abdomen on the thighs, even if it means the knees are bent right now. Let the head go down. Keep breathing deeply. Three, four, breathe in. And breathe out. Now go ahead, extend the legs the rest of the way that you would like to. And again, think about firming up the quadricep muscles. So pull up through the fronts of the legs to chin moving towards the chest to lengthen the back of the neck. Three, breathe in. Breathe out, four, inhale, exhale, good, inhale, bend the knees. This time wrap the arms around the backs of the legs, and as you exhale, start to extend the legs by pushing your knees into your arms. If your knees are still bent, that's okay. If your legs are all the way straight and you feel like you have a little more room, you could slide the forearms a little bit more down towards the ankles. 
Now, notice how pushing the backs of the knees into the arms helps to encourage the quadriceps to engage here. We like that, we want that. And then the arms are creating a little bit of resistance for the legs to move into. The good kind of resistance, the kind of resistance that leads us to more growth. <laughs> And then inhale, bend the knees, release the elbows. Exhale, hands on your waist. Inhale, stand all the way upright. Squeeze elbows towards each other. Exhale, release the arms. Feet together, Tadasana. Inhale, bend knees, reach arms up. Exhale, hands down to fold. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, ready foot forward, warrior one. Exhale, open to the side. Inhale, straighten right leg. Exhale, reach to the right for triangle. Right hand could be on the shin or the floor or a block. One. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Breathe in. Breathe out. Four. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Stand all the way up. Exhale. Bend. Great E. Warrior two. Breathe in. Breathe out. One. Inhale. Exhale, two, inhale, exhale, three, inhale, exhale, four, inhale, exhale, five, inhale, straighten right leg. Exhale, bend right knee. Place right hand outside of right foot. Reach left arm all the way over left ear. Breathe in. Breathe out one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. Inhale. Both hands down. Step right into plank. Exhale. Chip the up. Inhale. Upward facing dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Inhale. Left foot forward. Warrior one. Exhale. Open to the side. Inhale. Extend left leg. Exhale, Trikonasana. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, bend left knee. Breathe in. And breathe out. One. Virabhadrasana, two. Inhale. Exhale, two. Try to keep the gaze steady here. Exhale, three. It's very tempting to look around. <laughs> Four. But every time the eyes move, the brain also moves. The mind moves, two. We're trying to sort of quiet the mental energy. Three, breathe in. Breathe out, four. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, straighten left leg. Exhale, bend left knee. Place left hand outside of left foot. Right arm reaches over, breathe in. Breathe out, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three, 
Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. Inhale. Both hands down. Okay. Exhale. Chaturanga. Inhale. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale. Step right foot forward. Keep the feet where they are. As you exhale, start to extend the right leg and flex the right foot back so you're on the heel of the right foot. If that's hard to do with your hands on the floor, I would suggest having your hands up on blocks. Even if you don't typically use blocks, it can be helpful for this one. Inhale, bend the right knee again, look forward. Exhale, extend the right leg and fold. Again, inhale, bend right knee, right foot touches the floor, look forward. Exhale, extend the right leg, flex the right foot away. Inhale, bending. Exhale, extending. Now this time, stay there, flex the right foot. Pull the toenails back like you're trying to get the toenails closer to the front of the right shin. And then dig your right heel down into the floor. Without actually moving your right heel, pretend you want the right heel to drag back towards the back right corner of the mat. And then if that didn't already bring some activation into the quadriceps, you do it on purpose. So make it happen consciously, even if it didn't happen with all that stuff we just did. Okay, inhale, bend the right knee a little bit. Uh, bend, uh, place the right foot on the floor and scoot the left foot just a couple centimeters closer so you can anchor the heel down. Straighten the right leg again. Inhale, look forward, lift the head of the chest. Exhale, fold forward, head goes down. Breathe in. Breathe out, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three, inhale. Exhale, four, inhale. Exhale, inhale, lift head and chest, look forward. Exhale, move the left hand over to the right side of the right foot. Start to turn the chest to the right. Inhale, right arm reaches up, rotated triangle. Exhale, one. Inhale, exhale, two, inhale, exhale, three, inhale, exhale, four, inhale, exhale, five, inhale, hands down, plank pose, exhale, chaturanga, inhale, upward facing dog, Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward. Exhale, start to extend the left leg and flex the left foot. Again, blocks could be helpful if, it's, if this movement is tough. Inhale, bend the left knee, look forward. Exhale, extend and flex. Move with your breath. Inhale, bend, two. Exhale, extend, two, three, four. Make it a vinyasa, inhale. Last time, exhale, extend the leg. Flex the left foot back, stay there and breathe. Kick your heel down into the floor hard and pretend you're trying to pull the left heel back towards the back corner of the mat. And again, if that didn't already activate the right thigh, you do it on your own, consciously. Inhale, bend the left knee. A scoot the back foot in a little bit closer. Exhale, start to straighten the left leg again. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold forward. Breathe in. Breathe out, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three, inhale. 
Exhale. Four. In. Exhale. Five. Inhale. Bend the left knee. Oh no, don't bend the left knee. Pardon me. Exhale. Take the right hand all the way to the left side of the left foot. Start to turn the chest to the left. Reach left arm up. Breathe in. Breathe out. One. Inhale. Exhale, two, inhale. Exhale, three, inhale. Exhale, four, inhale. Exhale, five, inhale. Hands touch down, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Bring the feet together. And then keep the inner knees touching. So like that inner little fleshy bit on the knees. Keep that together. Lift the left foot off the floor and bend the left knee like 90 degrees. Push double hard with your hands into the floor and then push your right foot even harder down into the floor than you might for regular downward facing dog. I call this the flamingo. <laughs> Kidding, it doesn't really have a name. And then go ahead and switch your legs. So right knee bends, knees stay together. Push double hard with your hands like you're trying to push yourself away from the floor. Good, both feet down. Inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, bend knees. Inhale, hop or step forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend knees, reach up. Exhale, stand up, release the arms. left knee into the chest and clasp the hands underneath the left upper leg. Stand up straight and tall. As you exhale, flex the left foot, extend the left leg. In particular, reaching the back of the heel forward, so you're really lengthening the back part of the leg here. As you inhale, point the foot and bend the knee. Let's repeat. Exhale, flex, extend. Two, three, four. Inhale, point and bend. Try to make it a vinyasa. Exhale, flex, extend. Two, three, four. Inhale, point and bend. Three, last one. Flex, extend. Two, three. This time, keep the leg extended. Reach the arms up. Exhale. One. <laughs> Inhale. Everybody's favorite. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Good. Inhale, bring the arms alongside the body. Exhale, bend the left knee and the right knee. Bring the knees all the way together. So flesh of the knees touching. Inhale, tip the chest forward a little bit and look forward. Stretch the arms. Exhale, straighten both legs out. Warrior three. Breathe in. Breathe out one. Breathe in. Breathe out two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Two. Inhale. Exhale, five. Inhale, stand all the way up. Feet and legs together. Exhale. <laughs> Inhale, bend the right knee into the chest. Exhale, lace the hands underneath the right leg. Standing up straight and tall, lift the chest. Inhale. Exhale, flex right foot, extend right leg forward. Inhale, point and bend. Exhale, flex, extend, reach through the heel. Inhale, point and bend. 
Exhale, flex, extend. One more time. Make it a vinyasa. Inhale. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two, three. Good. Hold. Inhale. Arms up. Exhale. So even though when we're in a group class and there's an instructor, sometimes the breath pace is a little imperfect at times, but we're still striving to make as much of the practice of vinyasa as possible. Inhale, arms down alongside the body. Exhale, bend both knees, stick the inner knees together. Keep the knees together, tip the chest forward, look forward. On your next exhale, straighten both legs, Virabhadrasana three. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five. Inhale, stand up. Two, three, four. Exhale, Tadasana. Good. Inhale, bend knees, reach arms up. Exhale, hands down to fold. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, lift the heels high up. Exhale, bend the knees. Look way past your hands. Inhale, hop all the way through to sit or walk through to sit. And exhale, lay down on your back. <laughs> okay. Shavasana. <laughs> we have a little bit more to do before Shavasana, but I promise you'll get one. Okay. Arms alongside the body, both legs extended. Keeping the right leg straight, lift the right leg as high as you can off the floor while maintaining straight knee. And then when it's as high as you feel it can go, use the strength of your leg and the strength of your abdomen to pull it even closer. Hold it there for a moment. Try not to involve your neck or your jaw muscles here. And then slowly, like really slowly, descend the leg towards the floor. Again, lift, hold, squeeze it a little bit closer using your strength, but no jaw, no, no neck. <laughs> and then slowly release down with control. Again, lift, hold it at the top, squeeze it a little bit further, and slowly release down and lift and squeeze and slowly release down. Last one, lift. Use the muscles of your rear leg to squeeze even closer. This time, hold the back of your leg just like we did when we were standing. Flex the right heel up towards the ceiling. So really trying to get the back of the leg as long as possible. And then just like when we were standing, inhale, point the toes and bend the knee. Okay, now notice when you bent the knee, the thigh came a little bit closer towards the chest. Imagine you're gonna keep the thigh in exactly that same angle. Flex the right foot, start to extend the right leg, but try to avoid having the thigh move away from the chest. Try to keep it in that same relationship to the chest, even though it's much harder. And then point the foot and bend the knee. You gotta bring the thigh just one millimeter closer to the chest. Flex the foot, extend the leg, reach that heel away. Use the resistance of your hands to help you. Inhale, point and bend. <laughs> Exhale, flex, extend. Now keep the leg extended. Keep hold of the back of the leg. Lift your left foot one centimeter off the floor. Lift your nose like you're trying to touch your knee with your nose, shoulder blades off the floor, even the tips of the shoulder blades off the floor, and then reach the fingers towards the left foot. One. Keep breathing, even though it can be difficult when we're doing abdominal stuff too. Breathe out, three, inhale. 
exhale, four, inhale, exhale, hold the back of your leg as you lay back down. Bring the left foot flat onto the floor. Now, tip your tailbone off the floor. So just curl your tailbone almost like you're trying to round the lower back here. And then keep the lower back rounding, push the left foot down and lift the buttocks up off the floor. And then slowly release down. Again, curl the tailbone off the floor. So it's as if you're trying to round the back a little bit. Lift, hold, and release down. Three more like that. Lift, hold, slowly come down. Two more. Lift, hold, <laughs> slowly come down. What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Lift. Hold, just kidding, it's not the first time I've practiced this sequence. Release down, but it just doesn't get easier. <laughs> both feet down. Extend both legs out. Okay. You know, actually, while we're between sides, you know, that's one of the things is that, you know, you're not going to notice the small changes immediately. That's one of the benefits of having a daily practice or a really, really regular practice is that the, the things we're doing today will actually help with our leg mobility and strength down the line, even if today, even if the result doesn't happen in today's practice, right? So that's kind of like our, you know, yamas and niyamas, like the causes, the conditions that we're putting into place now aren't going to come into fruition until some time down the line. That is the name of the game. Okay, both legs extended. Reach the left leg as high up as you can. Don't involve the neck or the throat. Pull your leg closer, closer, closer. Hold. And then slowly, extremely slowly release down. Lift your left leg up. Hold it there at the top. Squeeze it a little bit closer. And slowly release down. Don't use your hands. <laughs> Lift your leg up. Keep it there. No hands, no neck. Try to pull it closer in. And then go twice as slow descending towards the floor as you did before. Twice as slow. And then last one. Lift, hold, squeeze it even closer. This time grab the back of your left leg with both hands. Uh, flex your left heel up towards the ceiling strongly. Reach up through the heel, extending the back of the leg. Then, just like when we were standing, point the left foot and bend the left knee. And notice how the left thigh comes a little closer to the chest. See if you can keep the left thigh in that new place as you flex and extend. Inhale, point and bend. Keep your thigh in that new place. Exhale, flex, extend. Let your hands help you. That resistance help you. Inhale, point and bend. Exhale, flex, extend. Now keep your leg extending. Lift your nose towards your knee like you're trying to touch your nose to your knee. Lift your right foot one centimeter off the floor and then reach your fingertips forward for one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three, inhale. Exhale, four, inhale. Exhale, hold onto your leg as you lay back down. Bring the right foot flat onto the floor. And keep the left leg extending. Curl your tailbone off the floor first, so it's like you're trying to round the lower back. Lift the hips up by pushing the right foot down and slowly release down. It's so hard. <laughs> Curl your tailbone up, lift up, and slowly release down. Two more. Lift. Keep that little, uh, kind of over-exaggerate that tuck. And lower. And lift. And lower. <laughs> Both feet onto the floor. 
Come on up to a seated position. Straighten both legs forward out in front of you. Flex the feet, sit up tall, and fold forward. Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold. One. Here too, see that the thighs are active and that the quadriceps are contracting. Even though it can be very tempting to like let it go here, especially after we did all that harder sequence just a moment ago. to a seated position. And then uh, preparing for inversion practice. So you're welcome to practice handstand, forearm stand, headstand, or even a combination of any of those three. You're welcome to move to the wall if you have space. Uh, just, you know, go ahead and take your time to do the inversions that you need to do. So it is very interesting that that's the way the nervous system works as well. Like when, when a movement is new for you, whether it's handstand or a pirouette or a touchdown, uh, well, I guess, it, well, running, sure, <laughs> running. Um, at first, the body is just exerting as much muscular effort from as many sources as it can you know, find, right? It's using all of its resources. And then the more that one repeats the exact same movement or the same patterns of movement, the more efficient the body becomes because the central nervous system has essentially started to like write little, write little inner computer programs for, you know, kind of how much muscular effort to use and where in order to execute the movement. So with time and with practice, the body actually becomes even more masterful at exerting exactly the right uh, amount of effort at exactly the right time and in exactly the right proportion to be as efficient as possible with the body's energy. So when you watch, you know, ballerinas or, you know, pro athletes or, you know, anyone, sort of that's what's happening. And, you know, <laughs> it does sort of, it does sort of often make me think, you know, in modern yoga, there does seem to be a bit of a, a bit of a emphasis on like, you know, I, I always need to sort of sweat a certain amount or I need to feel like I've gotten a certain amount of a workout or etc. But the more mastery of asana you have, the less you're going to sweat <laughs> and the less it's going to feel like a workout, if you will, because the body has it progressively mastered sort of how much energy to execute at, at, at any particular asana. So if one is constantly measuring one's practice in terms of how much did I exert myself or how much sweat did I produce or etc., cetera, that, that that's kind of, that might not be a great way to sort of measure one's success, if you will. I mean, depending on what your goals are, of course, we all have different goals for our yoga practice. But then the, you know, of course, then the pressure on the teachers is to like always make everything harder all the time. And of course, there's got to be an upper limit, either just objectively or, you know, as our bodies change or age or as we experience um, injuries or pregnancy or different kinds of things we might need to adjust. It can't always be an escalating matter. 
I hope. <laughs> you know, I, I'm reminded of uh, David Life used to say, uh, you can tell an advanced practitioner from a beginner because experienced practitioners know how to rest. Meaning, like, there's an exertion, for example, in wheel, and then you come down and an advanced practitioner will know how to just completely rest for that moment and then exert the energy to come back up. Whereas a beginner is still so kind of so in the process of learning kind of what goes where and how to do everything that a beginner will still be tense even in between, right? Even in the restful parts. So that's also an interesting thing to think about is, am I, you know, am I also not just exerting when I need to exert, but I'm, am I also resting when there's the need to rest? Yeah. Okay. So whatever inversion you're working on, go ahead and come on down and find your way onto your mat, laying down on your abdomen. Bring the arms behind you and interlock the fingers together into one fist. And with the inhale, lift head, chest, and arms up. Shalabhasana. One. Breathe in. Breathe out. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Release down. Again, inhale, lift head, chest, arms. Exhale, one, inhale. Exhale, two, inhale. Exhale, three, inhale. Exhale, four, inhale. Exhale, release on down. Bend the knees, reach back, catch hold of the ankles. Inhale, lift on up, head, chest, and knees. Don your asana. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five, release down. Bend knees, reach back and hold ankles. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Release. Place the hands either side of the chest. Inhale. Upward dog. Exhale. Downward dog. Inhale. Right foot forward. Exhale. The left knee down. You can have the blocks. On either side of the hips, take two big scooches back with the left knee, and then flex the right foot and start to send the right leg forward. Pause there, flex the toes back towards the leg, and dig your heel down into the floor and pretend you're dragging it back towards the back corner of the room. If that didn't already help you to activate the thighs, you go ahead and do that on purpose. Now you have the option to stay there or you can progressively move in further into your Hanumanasana. You can even move the blocks down as you go or even move the blocks to the side if they're getting in the way. But keep the chest lifting and keep the quadriceps flexing. Contracting is the better word. Then make your way all the way back, downward facing dog. Let's 
step the left foot forward, lower the right knee down. Again, you can have the blocks <clears throat> either side of your waist, take two big scooches back with the right knee, and then straighten the left leg out. Flex the left foot, contract the left quadricep muscle, and then you can, of course, stay there, or you can start to work your way into Hanumanasana. Hanuman was, a, was definitely a being who knew how to direct his energy, right? And in fact, all of his direction of energy, like, he was the embodiment of devotion, right? So his, all of his energy was directed towards literally one object. And then everything that he did was a result of being able to direct that devotional energy, including leaping across rivers and oceans, including lifting mountains up and whatever else, touching the sun and all the other things. <laughs> because all of his energy was directed towards one devotional object. Okay, downward facing. Inhale, lift the heels high up. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, hop, oh, hop or walk through to sit. <laughs> the clumsy yoga teacher. And then lay down on your back. Feet on the floor, lift the hips up. Interlock the hands into one fist behind the back. One, breathe in, breathe out. Two, inhale. Exhale, three, inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, separate the hands, release the back down to the floor. Coming into uh, wheel or Vidanarasana. So here's another place where you can really kind of use your, use your ability to direct your energy. If you're not going to do, if you're going to do all three, great. <laughs> if you're not going to do all three, maybe start with a second half wheel and then build it up rather than kind of lifting up, using your whole burst of energy and then not, not being able to, you know, lift up again. So see if you can sort of incrementally increase if you're not doing all three. So set up the hands and the feet, get ready. Exhale, the full breath out. And then with your inhale, go ahead and lift up. Word on your Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five, chin to chest, slowly release down. Rest. <laughs> Again, placing hands and feet. Exhale, a full breath out. And inhale, lift up. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five. Release on down. All right, third time. Here we go. Place hands and feet. With your inhale, lift up. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Breathe in. Breathe out, four. Inhale. Exhale, five. Inhale, chin to chest. Exhale, release on down. Good. Hug the knees into the chest. Bring both knees all the way over to the left side of the body as you look to the right, arms out into a T. Bring the 
knees up to the center, and go the other way. center and set up either for shoulders down with the hands on the back and the legs up towards the ceiling or Viparita Karani. So one way is to have the block under the sacrum and the legs going up towards the ceiling. But keep a little bit of an arch in the low back. In other words, you're not rounding the back into that empty space between the back and the floor. And the chest is open, collarbones are spreading. You might not be able to remember being a beginner at yoga, <laughs> but you know, whatever you're beginning, if you're learning to draw or learning to play the drums, or learning um, dance, you know, as a beginner, again, things can be a little kind of clunky and clumsy, and, and what, you, what you can notice when you're watching someone who's very skillful is like a painter kind of knows like exactly how much paint to apply and exactly sort of how heavy or light, the hand, the energy of the hand needs to move onto the paper to get just the right brush stroke or just the right pen stroke. And that's again something that, that is possible through repetition and practice, right? Through steady, uninterrupted practice over a long period of time. And the mistakes are part of it, right? I think that's something that we sometimes lose is, you know, that painter had to make a thousand brush strokes that weren't exactly it, right? I hesitate to even call it a mistake because it was only through making that brush stroke 10,000 times that the painter is able to sort of refine exactly that stroke. Or if you've practiced your Sanskrit calligraphy, right? Writing those letters, it takes time to teach your hand the, the asana <laughs> that it takes to write your script smoothly and beautifully and in a way that others could, you know, read it very clearly. Same with speaking Sanskrit language, right? We have to teach our mouth a bunch of new shapes in order to make the sound. And that takes time and repetition. If you're in shoulder stand, come into plow, halasana, feet behind the head. If the feet touch the floor, you can clasp the hands together. If you're in shoulder stand, slowly start to, if you're in plow, slowly start to roll down out of it. taking shoulder stand and plow, then coming to fish, Matsyasana. And then release down. 
Come on up to a seated position, sit all the way up, and set up a comfortable seat for meditation practice. Let go of any effortful breathing. Breath returning to a natural cycle. Directing the energy of the mind towards a single pointed focus. Starting with the breath, noticing each time there's inhaling, each time there's exhaling. From there, you can add a mantra to the breath, inhaling let, exhaling go. Or if you're working with a different mantra, you could use that instead. the quality of the mind. Some days it might feel like the mind is a bit like a frayed electrical wire where it just wants to flit this way and that way with every thought or sound that it comes across. <laughs> and other days it might feel like the mind has a more one directional focus. to stay in meditation or you may move into Shavasana.
and Shivasana slowly make your way up to a seated position. just the way you intend to teach them because, you know, it, it can be the case that you've sequenced something that, that seems great in your mind or you sequence something that was great as it is, but if you add, uh, like say in the moment you decide like, well, let me add another single leg standing balance or let me add a little, little something here or an extra plank or an extra side plank and you haven't experienced it in the context of what they're experiencing, you might not realize their leg is already fatigued or you might not realize they've already been on their hands so much. Um, and little things like that, that you know, if, if you have it in your body, you'll realize quite quickly like, oh, you know, this, this has been a long time on the hands or this has been a really long time on the right leg, let me, let me break this up into two sequences or, or something like that. Um, but if you're kind of going with your, you know, spontaneity and with your instinct, you, you know, you might not be to totally as tuned in to what the experience is like from the student's side as you could be uh, from practicing your sequences. So I'm a big fan of planning my sequence and practicing my sequence. Um, that doesn't mean I don't adjust it, you know, sort of throughout the week or throughout the couple of weeks that I'm teaching a particular sequence. I might make little adjustments, add something, take something away, embellish something. But I, but that comes, you know, from a very purposeful place where I have felt it in my body. I've seen it in the students. I'm, you know, kind of relating to it. To see how uh, to see how it's coming across. <laughs> 